Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So some of you may recall the review I did of the lightweight, thin film, amorphous, power film, solar panel. I've done a couple reviews on it about a year ago now and uh, still going strong with this 10 watt panel that I've had for many years. Uh, power Films have been making these for quite a while. And if you don't know, it's basically a flexible, foldable, exceptionally durable solar panel which can sustain all kinds of abuse and keep on ticking. You can puncture holes in this, you can scrunch it up. It doesn't matter, you know, how you mistreat this thing, you're probably not going to destroy it. You may compromise the output level, uh, the power level, but you're definitely not gonna destroy it entirely. It is somewhat weather resistant as well. And of course, because it's foldable, it's amendable to a lot of different backpacks and tent setups, shelter setups and whatnot. So Powerfilm recently brought another product to market called the Lightsaver, which I'm gonna be reviewing today. And it has unique rollable form factor to it. It employs the same thin film solar technology that you've seen here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at it. We're gonna discuss the pros and cons of it, break it down in depth. And we're also gonna have a general discussion about the various pros and cons of the three main types of solar panels that you can get for portable backpacking. So let's get into it. So the main advantage of these thin film solar panels is that not only are they more flexible and agile and in some respects more durable, they also have a much higher shade tolerance. So in a monocrystalline solar panel, if any part of that panel is covered by dirt or shade or snow or any sort of debris, the entire circuit can be affected and this is going to reduce the panel's ability to produce power. Now with the thin film solar panels, this is not the case. So I'm gonna post a link to a video which demonstrates how a thin film solar panel of half the specified wattage, 40 watts compared to a 80 watt monocrystalline solar panel, actually produces more power than the monocrystalline when there's a certain amount of shade covering that monocrystalline solar panel. Now certainly the monocrystalline solar panels are more photovoltaic. They have a higher efficiency, meaning that they're gonna convert about 15 to 20% of that sun's light into actual energy that you can use. Whereas the thin film solar panels range between seven and 13%, but the thin film panels are a lot lighter. Personally, I like them more as long as you have the space Basically, uh, you're gonna be okay with thin film panels and they're gonna function a lot better in low light conditions. So today we're talking about the new Powerfilm Lightsaver, which integrates a battery pack, which is powered by a rollable solar thin film amorphous panel. All right, so with the Powerfilm rollable Lightsaver solar panel, what you're gonna get is something which is readily accessible. You can use it in a pinch, and it can be very subtly stowed away as you can see on the 511 tactical pack that I have here. So I want to show you why I think that this is the perfect match for this 511 tactical pack. So as I said before, the bladder hose uh, holes here which are sealed up with velcro work perfect to hold the power film in place and when you need it you simply can unroll it let it hang down in front and of course you could strap it on there if you were going for a walk. And uh, when you need access to your main compartment you still have that access there so you can just flip it over. And then of course you can re-roll it up. Like so. And it's ready to go and you could just get some elastic bands or something to hold that in place there. So the lightsaver does come with a two-year warranty. Unfortunately, it's not entirely waterproof. It is somewhat water resistant, but due to the micro USB and USB output, it's going to limit the water resistance of the product. So there is that micro USB input, so you can charge it from a wall. And of course you have your standard USB output that outputs one amps and this is gonna be compatible with most of your USB 2.0 devices. Most battery packs nowadays come with a 2.1 amp output, which makes for faster charging. So this doesn't have that, but I'm told by Powerfilm that future versions 
will incorporate this into the design. Now having the integrated battery pack is great, but unfortunately you can't charge direct from the panel. So basically you're putting the energy into the battery pack and then that is of course going to charge your devices. Now it is only a 3200 milliamp battery pack, so I have a lot of concerns about this because I think nowadays you need at least 10,000 milliamps in there for this to be worthwhile. So my suggestion to them would be to expand the surface area of the panel, you know, make it a bit longer and increase the size of the battery pack in order to be competitive with other products on the market today. So inside the roll, there's one 18650 lithium ion battery in there. And the way I see it, you could probably easy squeeze at least two of those in there. That would up the power storage capabilities to over 6,000 milliamps. And you gotta remember that due to the 70 to 80% conversion rate and the power loss when that energy is moved from the pack to your device. So if they're saying it's 3,200 milliamps, really you're only getting about 2,400 of those milliamps into your phone, enough to charge an iPhone once, but not enough to fully charge most modern, larger smartphones and phablets. Now this product is manufactured in the United States, which should win it some points for anybody who's concerned about the current economic downturn. In order to revitalize the economy, we need to start supporting small businesses who are manufacturing their products right here in North America. There is overcharge and over discharge protection in order to protect your devices and the unit itself. So the weight of this product is 4.9 ounces, so it's incredibly light. The size of it when it's rolled up is 7.8 inches by 1.6 inches and the deployed length is 7.8 by 18.5 inches. Now if you want to charge this from the wall it's going to take about 3 hours and to charge from a solar panel they predict it's going to take about 6 hours of full sunlight. So in spite of the fact that this will trickle charge even in low light conditions they're predicting that the battery pack itself will fill up in 6 hours in full sunlight. Now the obvious question that hasn't been answered yet here is how many watts is this pack? Panel. And I did some back and forth with the product manager at PowerFilm in an attempt to get a straight answer about the wattage of this panel. I'm just going to read you the explanation that they provided me with regards to why they are not posting the wattage of this panel. And I think they do make some convincing arguments here. So here's the personal message I received from PowerFilm about why they do not post the wattage on this particular panel. Here we go. So we do not typically provide the wattage rating for the panel in the lightsaber for two major reasons. First, it is not a consumer or even reviewer testable number. With no ability for outside parties to confirm or deny the number given, it becomes easily misused and misquoted, leading to false advertising and comparisons. And I just want to interject here and say that any power film panel that does not have an integrated battery pack does provide the wattage. Carrying on. Second, in a system like the lightsaber, the panel wattage has much less bearing on the performance of the total product than for that standalone panel when the wattage produces obviously the entire function of the product. As a mobile power bank, the lightsaber and similar product have two major parts that can overwhelm even fairly large differences in panel output that is, the charge controller and the boost converter from the USB output. Efficiency for both of these components ranges from 75% to 92% in devices readily available on the market. So when the panel output is listed in watts, it tends to be treated as the only number that matters for a device and thus can be used to mask deficiencies in the performance aspects that actually matter to the user, i.e. how much power will they get into their device and how long will it take to generate that power. Due to these issues, we at PowerFilm focus on listing charge times rather than wattage in an effort to get the consumer the information that is both testable, has direct bearing on the use of the system, and hope that over time both consumers and reviewers will demand and test these numbers from all manufacturers. So really PowerFilm is trying to set a new industry standard with respect to how we assess solar panels that have onboard battery packs to such an extent that we may have in the future some sort of equation or abbreviation that indicates how many milliamps of power you're getting in X amount of hours of direct sunlight as opposed to the mere wattage of the panel which as they explained here can be skewed by a variety of variables. You know I'm as traditionalist and skeptical as an X guy when it comes to wanting to know how much wattage a solar panel is outputting. So I definitely challenged on this, but I finally come around to understand the reasoning why they're marketing this way. And maybe you guys want to weigh in on the comments section. I know there's a lot of techies out there who know a lot more about this stuff. 
I'm really interested in your opinions on how they're trying to market this in terms of charge times as opposed to panel wattage output. Really the main thing I like about this design is its portability and just the ease and practicality with which it can be used. Now, as you've seen there on my 511 pack, it stows away very conveniently. It can be rolled out in a pinch and you can, because of the tube-like form factor, you can easily stash it in places in your pack where, you know, otherwise that space might go to waste because there isn't anything else that could fit in there. So even if they were to make future larger versions of this design, just the fact that it's a roll and not a flat thing, which you have to worry about, you know, keeping straight and breaking like those Monte Crystalline panels, I think that's one of the main benefits of this device. And also, of course, the main benefit of thin film is that shade tolerance and the ability to function in low light conditions. In addition to that, I think Power Film is just a great company all around. They've been around for about 26 years. Uh, they're putting a two-year warranty on this, which is admirable. For the reasons I listed before, I think I personally might hold off and wait till they expanded the size of the battery pack for a device like this before I went out and purchased it. But that's not to say anything about the quality of their other products they have. They've made a lot of great products over the years. And if there's any company that I can get behind, you know, I get behind companies like Silky and Monowalker. Uh, Power Film is right up there with the best of them. The main criticism of this device is that you could just carry a battery pack right now, which contained three times the amount of power in an equivalent weight. So finding the right fit for a pack solar combo like this, which is so small, you know, it would be very challenging to do to find the ideal conditions in which you need something like this. But if they could up the size of it a bit and up the capacity, then it would be a winner for sure. I also think they might want to reconsider the notion of not disclosing the wattage of the panel. If they want to transition into a new industry standard, I think that's something that we are going to have to gradually work our way towards. I think it's a lot to expect the market to just instantly adjust to a new nomenclature about charge times as a measure of solar panel efficiency. Another thing I would like to see is for them to up the IPX rating on this a bit. I think that easily could be achieved by allowing for some waterproof caps to cap those micro USB and USB output ports. That would just provide it a bit more water resistance because certainly because this does function in low light conditions, it's very likely that it will still function when it's overcast and there might be a light drizzle so the device might get wet. So you're definitely gonna want that protection for it. Especially if this is something I'm gonna have on the top of my backpack ready for deployment in a pinch, I'm gonna wanna make sure that it is water resistant. And my last criticism is that they need to increase the amperage of the output from the USB to 2.1 amps so you can get that fast charging of your phone because it's going to take you six hours to charge this in sunlight then another three hours to move that power into your device so that's just too slow by today's standards. Now PowerFilm does claim that they have a much larger version of this in the works. It's supposed to be 16,000 milliamps so stay on the lookout for that product in the future. So anyways, all in all, I think the idea is great. I think the product itself needs some upgrading before it's an economically viable option for most people. But as it stands, PowerFilm has a plethora of great products on the market from low wattage output panels to uh, big purchase items like 120 watt foldables, which are incredibly lightweight and compactable, so definitely go and check those out. If you were wanting to pick one of these up, you can get it through my amazon.ca store. Uh, this helps me support the channel so I can get better equipment to make more videos, of course. Most of you know my passion is to make the after the claps and the apocatalk stuff, and that's definitely where I'm heading, but in order to pr keep providing you content in between those, I do these gear review videos. So there's gonna be quite a few of those gear reviews and interviews in between the apocatalk stuff, because we don't wanna be all apocatalk and no action. So please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out those power film panels. Thanks for watching, Canadian Prepper out. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.